I asked you guys for some tips on what I could do with my backyard. I've gotten some good tips from y'all, and I appreciate it so much. My mind is just spinning. I'm ready to do something. But I looked out my window this morning, and right over to the right, it was there the whole time when I did the video about asking you for help, and I just didn't see it. Right there are my Sega palms that I cannot kill for anything, and they're coming back stronger and greener than ever. And I realized that is what I need to anchor my little area that I'm going to see when I look out my kitchen window. And it got my mind spinning, and all kind of things have started coming to me on what I could do. And I wanted to talk to y'all about it today and kind of show you step by step what I'm thinking. And the other day, I blessed y'all with a view of my junk pile that's under my awning. It's still here. <laughs> Nothing's gone. But I, I am fixing to work on it. As the weather has cooled off, this is kind of the next frontier. However, to help me not be shuffling the deck chairs on the Titanic, as I said before, if I can utilize some of this stuff, then I don't really have to organize it over here. I can just get it out from under here and use it. For instance, you can't see it, but right back here, is something I need. One of my viewers, Joan Marie, said, why don't you make a fire pit back there? And as soon as she said that, I was like, why didn't I think of that? We have this big, it's big. I guess it's about two foot tall, but it's also about six inches, eight inches off the ground because it's on big rollers. But it is a cast iron welded, <laughs> It was created at a welding shop. A friend of my husband's made it. It's a fire pit. And he made it. His guys at his shop made it or whatever with their CNC kind of welding cutting thing. It's got LSU on this side. It's got LSU there. And just all kind of other stuff with LSU football around it, even on that side over there. So from whatever side you're sitting on, when there's a fire going in it, it glows that LSU Tiger stuff in there. Anyway, <laughs> I cleaned it out before we moved and we brought it here. My problem is it's cast iron. It is heavy. I can't move it, I don't think. I'm gonna try to pick up on it while I'm talking to y'all. Uh, I can kind of tilt it, but I can't move it. Yes, it's on rollers, but it's kind of even hard for me to roll it. But I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out. I see on Holler Homestead, they use their lawnmower all the time to pull stuff everywhere. I might try to somehow hook this up <laughs> to the back of my lawnmower and pull it around there. But the thing is, it's on the back side. Rather than go all the way around all this junk, to go way over there on the other side of the azalea with it, rather than do that, would be so much easier just to go straight out. So I need to clear a pathway for it. Then I can bring my lawnmower right here and hook up my come along, my chain. I, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it. It's probably gonna be a very hard process. Um, but you know, <laughs> if I don't do it, how's it gonna get done? I'm gonna try. All, all that can happen is it'll tump over and I'll, I'll have to stand it back up, but I, I gotta try. So that's the only way I think I'm gonna get it out there. Um, we're, go we're gonna see. But that means I need to clear out all of this stuff. A few of these items are going to the road, so that's the easiest way to clear them out is instead of moving them over and then moving them later, I'm just going to go ahead and get them to the road. But before I do that, I wanted to kind of give you an idea of what's going on in my mind and what I'm kind of coming up with using some ideas y'all gave me, but also using things I have around my property. Let, let's just walk around and I'll kind of, I'll try to think it out for you. And if I can put a little drawing together or something, I will. And I'll, I'll insert that in here. But let's just start with the beginning. So I'm out here right now down at ground level in this beautiful backyard. <laughs> but that greenery over there, that's what got me thinking. If I kind of used the three pieces that I have of it and made a little arc kind of towards Richard's trail, but back a little bit, I could kind of make a backdrop for a circle 
that had the fire pit in the middle. So I could put a little bench here, fire pit in the middle, those things back there. And I was thinking I could bring my wood chips and make a big, huge circle that all of this is bounded around. I would rather use gravel or rocks to make a really pretty outdoor circle, maybe with some stepping stones work down into the rocks, but I don't have any of that. Here's my next mission that I'm kind of on. Once I saw the Sega Palms this morning, when I looked out that window, it's just like, boom, they were there yesterday when I did the video, but they just jumped out to me today. And it's like, you hadn't been able to kill these things. They won't burn and die. What are you gonna do with them? Might as well use them. And maybe it's just meant to be that they're there because they're free. <laughs> They'll have actually more pups probably coming off of them later if they take root. And it'll be what I asked for. It'll be a permanent kind of green plant back there, even though I did not have Sega palms in mind when I said that yesterday. But it got me thinking, what else do I have to use to where this won't cost me a dollar. Because here's the thing, right now, making a little pretty little area out in my backyard, just so I'll have something pretty to look at out of my kitchen window, is not the biggest priority in the world. It's gonna make me happy. <laughs> it's gonna make me feel better when I look out the window. And I do think we need to prioritize our peace and our happiness into our formulas when we're figuring things out in this world but it's not the most top of the list kind of thing it's just simply something that'll make me happy so I was thinking to myself <laughs> what would make me even happier is to just be creative and do it taking y'all suggestions taking my own ideas of what I know I have around here there's no way for you all to know exactly what I have around here so I started walking the property this morning and I thought that was, that will make me even more happy is if I can pull it together using what I have, <laughs> scraps that they are, and make it free, just make it free. It'll be as pretty as a free project made out of scraps can be, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm okay with that because it's in my backyard it's not going to be seen hardly at all except people that go to my sink or somebody that just happens to be walking in my backyard but if it comes together like I think it will it can be an enjoyable little spot for even my son to go out there with friends and do the fire pit and sit down and, and enjoy an evening it'll be you know like I said making me happy looking at it outside I can even start going out there to do editing or just to listen to birds because I can actually hear the birds better in my backyard than I can up here where I have a lot of traffic and all. So it's just, it all started coming together in my mind. Laney, just use what you have. So I thought to myself, what do I have? <laughs> I have wood. I've shown you my wood pile that I have left. I knew I had a pile of blocks back here and I knew I had a couple of cinder blocks but in my mind, the little bench I needed, I needed three. I wasn't sure if I had that. And I knew I had this wood chip pile. Would I rather rocks? Would I rather crush limestone or some really, you know, even limestone rocks? Yes, but I have wood chips. So I think I can make it very pretty and very, uh, I think things look better when they have a border rather than just setting everything on dirt, even though it's the same stuff sitting on dirt. Somehow when you put a border around it with, with wood chips or with something, it just makes it. One side of the border is gonna be the Sega Palms. One side of the border is gonna be the benches. I'm gonna kind of be creative with the stones I found today. See what I can do with that. But the wood chips themselves will kind of be a border. So let me show you, let me start and show you what it's on my mind and then I'm hoping that it'll all come together. I'm hoping maybe in the next day or so I can get this done, maybe. Um, and I think it's gonna be nice. I think it's gonna be nice. Let's look at it, hold on. 
Okay, I showed you this pile just a second ago while I was talking. It's about a half of a wood chip dump pile that I have left. I actually had two complete dump piles and it went all the way out to about there, way over there on the other side of that dirt. I had two big, huge mounds. This is about a half or less of one of the mounds. This is probably about a third of a mound. And so being able to use some of it in another part of the yard will accomplish a couple of things. I'm ready for this pile to be gone. I'm just tired of looking at it. I've had wood chip piles since I moved in. Yes, they're a bonus to have, but I'm kind of ready for this one to get used down. <laughs> I'm kind of ready for this whole back part of my yard to get cleaned up. Haven't really been able to enjoy this part of my yard because of the stuff and I'm ready for this to get cleaned up. Number two benefit will be that I'll be putting it over there on dirt on that part of my yard, which is not that fertile. And I'm thinking having these wood chips sitting on it for a long, long time will draw in earthworms and it'll draw in just, uh, it'll start breaking down and making a natural dirt, which one day I might be able to plant some things back there. Another thing that is going to happen with this project it's funny how one project just rolls and makes other things possible and it helps you do things that you've had on your list but you didn't really know how to accomplish well when we first moved in this property i think i told y'all i had concrete everywhere i had cinder blocks i had pieces of red stepping stones that were broken all over the yard i had broken cinder blocks i just had lots of pieces that were just stuck down in the dirt and I had to kind of dig them up with a shovel. And I just brought them all over here and threw them over here. And every now and then I'll use one to chalk something up or to do things. But for the most part, I've just had a, a junk pile of stones here. So this project is going to help me in two ways with that too. The bench I wanted to build, I had figured I would need three cinder blocks. I didn't know if I had them back here. But when I walked back here this morning, I had one, two, and that there is a cinder block. So I have three that, this one I don't think is broken. I think it's okay. So that's exactly what I needed for my project. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate that. Sometimes you don't get more than what you need. You just get what you need, but that's all you need. But also around the fire pit, I don't want just wood chips right up to the edge of the fire pit or my fire pit sitting on wood chips. So I'm just gonna have the fire pit sitting on the dirt ground. It's, it'll be fine. And then I'm gonna take a lot of these odd shaped pieces of concrete, like say that. They kind of look like little boulders. Some of these over here, like that and that. And I'm gonna take those and kind of arrange them around the outside edge of the fire pit, just to kind of look like a little ring of rocks around them. If these don't work the way I want them to, and if they don't look good, I can always kind of borrow those lava rocks that I ended up taking from one part of my yard and putting over near my carport, kind of edge in a flower bed. I could steal those if I have to. But my goal really is to not do that. It's to find things that I have laying around and to make them pretty by putting them to use in a good way. The three cinder blocks are gonna be for a bench I'm gonna make. I want one cinder block at one end, one in the middle and one at the other end. It's only gonna be about a four, four and a half foot long bench, but it's what I need. And I'm gonna borrow these four by fours that I have under there. I have uh, three pieces that I think will be the length that I need. Those are gonna be a part of my bench. And then a lot of these two by fours that I have here are gonna be a part of my bench. Um, it may not take a whole lot of them, but it'll be using up some of these scraps. Trying to use up a lot of these scraps for projects in a beneficial way to me, projects that are needed, but to kind of get her done and use up some of this wood. So why go out and figure something else out for a bench when I could make one? And I'm not gonna lie to you, I got on Google last night <laughs> and I Googled benches and I found this uh, iron kind of glider bench. I didn't want anything with cushions or anything like that out there. I didn't want anything wooden or whatever, um, like to order something wooden. I just said, what about a metal bench? And then I saw one that was a glider. So I said, that's perfect. 
and it was only like $79.99, $50 of shipping. So it was really like $130. So I almost, I was almost ready to just say, you know what? Let me just, instead of building something, let me just order this. It'll be pretty, it'll be prettier, you know? Let me just do that. But I always have two reasons. Sometimes one reason doesn't make you not do something. Two reasons do. One reason is it's said on there that the maximum weight capacity for the glider rocker, metal glider rocker, was 300 pounds. <laughs> well, my husband weighs 205. Um, I can tell you right now, I don't weigh 95 pounds. And I'm like, what if you go way over 300? Because, well, I mean, who weighs, <laughs> I don't weigh 95 pounds. So I'm like, what if we go over 300? Is the whole thing going to collapse? I don't want to order something and come to find out later, it's just a pile of junk. Been there, done that. Bought the t-shirt, got the bag of chips. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of ordering things that are junk. So I said, no, um, I would rather build something that might end up years later, kind of rotting it out there or something, but it's free than to order something that's going to end up being a piece of junk that's not going to hold the weight. I don't want to worry about who comes and sits out there. I don't want to be adding people's weight in my mind when I'm watching them sit down, hoping the thing doesn't bend. So nix that, just nix that. <laughs> and I didn't want to spend more money to get a better one because I'm like, you know, I'll be $300 into this bench. It's just a bench. So that's what made me decide to build one. That, that's the second reason is you need to use up wood off this wood pile. The cinder blocks, you figured out you had three. That's providential. Just use those, just use those because it just needs to be something simple out here. Uh, I would rather right now, if I had an extra $130 or more, if I ordered a better bench, right now, I would rather take that $130 and do something with it. Like this morning, I went to a farmer's market and I bought some fresh Angus beef for my freezer. I bought some fresh sausage. I bought some homemade honey, some homemade hibiscus tea. I bought all kinds of things that I wanted at a farmer's market that are homegrown just miles from my house. Made me so happy. I would rather go give people like that the money than to buy a bench that's gonna sit out here and rust in my backyard and maybe collapse if my husband and I sit on it. So I'm gonna put my money back into my pocket and I'm not gonna be ordering anything probably anymore for a while off of websites just on whims. If it's something I absolutely have to get, okay. But right now with the times the way they are and all, I'm gonna really try to keep my dollars closer to home. And I didn't need that bench. But you know how I always say, ain't nothing easy? <laughs> it's cause it's not. I need my wheelbarrow. I knew it had the last of some triple 13 in it. I was gonna put that in a bucket and just grab my wheelbarrow and start hauling rocks and wood chips and everything to make this project go really fast. Well, my wheelbarrow has a flat tire. See that? It's flat. I gotta figure out how to air it up. The thing is, let me see what kind of stem it's got on it. It's got a regular tire stem on it. The thing is, I cannot find our air compressor. I need to call my son. He's not home right now. And I need to ask him if he knows where it is. I just went up into the 18 wheeler and I cannot find it. So I can use this. It's just a whole lot harder to maneuver and a whole, it just kind of, you use a lot more muscles when the tire's kind of flat like this and it's very flat. Or I just thought to myself, I could use my golf cart for all the cinder blocks and the stones and just get them over there to that area. I could worry about the wheelbarrow tomorrow for all the wood chips. And I could maybe just today start figuring out how to pull this fire pit over there because the fire pit has to be in place before I put any stones around it. And it has to be in place before I edge everything in wood chips. So I think this fire pit needs to go first which means I gotta go get the key to the lawnmower and I gotta go find, I call it a come along. I'm not sure if that's what it's called, but it's like a, um, a big thick rope that has loops on each end and you loop it around something and, and it loops. I'm gonna loop that to the handles. 
and see if I can pull it. This is the thing I'm talking about, whatever this thing's called. I'm gonna loop it around the handle and see what I can do. I came inside to get the key to the lawnmower and to the golf cart. And this, I thought I had an acorn in my shoe. I bent down to get it out and it was this. One of these had been in the dirt underneath there when I was cleaning out to make that path for the fire pit. And it was stuck straight in my heel. However, I had enough rubber on my shoe to where it didn't go in my foot. Very, very appreciative that that did not go in my foot. I just filmed myself pulling this from the shed all the way over here and didn't have my camera on. But I can tell you right now, I did it. <laughs> I did it. I just got to stand it back up and make sure it's where I want it, but I did it. <laughs> I'm always trying to kind of convey the problems that I have when doing stuff. Uh, some women may just know how to do all this, but this is the first time in my life I'm doing some of this stuff. So you see how that little thing loops into itself and hooks onto that bumper? Well, I just discovered, makes sense, but you can't just turn around and loop this end on there the same way because you have to pull the whole thing through to make it loop. Well, if that's hooked to your bumper already, how are you gonna pull this whole thing through? So at first I didn't know what to do. I was trying to figure out if I needed some other kind of ratchet or I didn't know what to do. You know, but finally, what I did was I just looped it like around there, pulled it, and looped it in again. It's not really pulled through, it's just looped. But anyway, I did that like three times until it was very, very tight feeling to me. I kind of worried that the minute I started really giving it some pull, it was going to just unravel. But it didn't. It stayed taut and it pulled this thing all the way across the yard. <laughs> you can see where it dug into it. I got some dirt and leaves all up in it. I'm going to have to get out, but that's okay. I did it and I did it on my own and I am mighty, mighty proud. Well, the bonus is by the time I got that thing out of here and I took some stuff to the road, it's really not that bad of a situation here. I really and truly think I can organize all this, get it straightened up, put a few things into my 18-wheeler container, and organize like some of those things back there can actually go in buckets with labels, some of that food for trees and stuff like that, and get it cleaned up. I think I could do this in just an hour and a half or so. Why don't you, Lainey? Well, it's on my list. <laughs> it's on my list. It's just about to get dark. But I came in here just to see if the placement was right for that fire pit. And no, uh, it's behind that tree. I'm thinking I need to put it over here somewhere. When I look out, I don't want to be looking at stuff behind the tree. Because the tree right now hardly has any leaves on it. It will be leafed out later. So I definitely, I got to remember in the morning, I want to pull it over here to this area that has some stubble on it. Kind of pull it over there. Okay, just checking that off my list. I'm gonna go step by step and come back in the house and look out there and make sure I've got everything placed where I want it to be. Well, I got to rocking and rolling today with no camera on. So I'm just gonna give you a recap of what I'm up to. I was gonna get out here early this morning and start this. It's Saturday, October 28th. It got dark on me last night, so I had to stop. But I forgot we had a grandson's soccer game at 10.15 this morning, about 40 miles away. So we went to that, it was fun but didn't get home till 12 30 quarter to one so i'm out here mid-afternoon just getting started so i'm going to rip and run and just film little bits at the time as i'm progressing i really really want to make some progress on this today i'm using the cinder blocks as the base for my bench i'm actually going to make a topper for my bench using these four by fours and then i'm using two by fours cut 60 inches Five of these pieces here are going to make my actual bench that you would sit on. And then two of these pieces are going to actually run through the middle of the cinder blocks. And I'm making a little subsystem to kind of connect it all together so that the cinder blocks and all of these boards become one piece. They become one bench. 
and I'm gonna still, even after I build it, I feel like it's gonna be heavy, sturdy. It's gonna, the weight distribution is gonna be right to where it won't tilt over, but I'm still gonna test it and everything to make sure. I don't want grandkids jumping up on this thing, running along it and have anything tilt. I don't think it will. Those cinder blocks are very heavy. These boards are gonna be very heavy, but I'm still just trying to engineer it to make sure that I don't have any accidents or any way that it could tump over. And I've got here my little PVC pipe that I had over in my tool rack, my little trough. And I'm gonna actually use it to help me knock the mud and the debris out of the middle of those cinder blocks when I dig them up, because they have things in them. And I don't wanna be sticking my hands in there because I don't know what's in there. <laughs> so I brought this over here to kind of help me do that. That's my next thing is I'm going to spend the, about the next hour sanding all these boards I hate sanding. I hate sanding, but I'm going to do it. I got to sand all these boards. Then I'm going to start not only putting it together, but I've got to go clean those cinder blocks off and haul them over there with my golf cart or whatever. So just got a lot going on. I'm going to update you as I go and I'll go look out my window every now and then when I have something to show you and let you know the progress from the view of the window because that's what this is all about. And the building on the bench has begun. It's a little bit windy, but I'm going to try to film this and just explain to you how my brain works. I can't screw straight into these cinder blocks. I don't have what I need to do that. But I want this to be kind of seat height. I didn't want it to be too low to the ground, in other words, and just put a top on the cinder blocks to sit on. So I used the 4x4s on top of the cinder blocks and they're going to be the base for the five pieces of board that are going to be the seat. But I didn't want it to be to where that just comes off. I didn't want it to be where someone could step on an edge of it and it flip or anything like that. So I'm building a base that's inside the cinder blocks. I ran a board the length of this hole and a board the length of that hole. And then I put boards on each end, a two by four on each end to hold those two boards together to make them where they're more like one board. And also I did it to where the two by four doesn't have any play in it. It's gonna be right up to the edge. Now, this is actually gonna raise up in a minute. When I get this top built, when I get the five boards that are gonna be the seat, when I get them put all along here, then I'm gonna raise this bottom part up and I'm gonna use these little eight inch pieces to go straight up and down and connect the two. So these pieces, there'll be two on each end of this that connect the top and the bottom together to make it all one system of boards. In other words, it's all hooked together because it's going to be connected from top to bottom at each end. And it'll keep these boards higher up, but they'll be connected, so that's okay. And I'm also going to try to connect the middle somehow, but I'm, I'm doing that at the very end and just seeing what I got. Um, but anyway, these cinder blocks, once I picked up on them, they are not the cinder blocks. I did a video on that. There's some blocks made out of cinder that are lighter weight, easier to fool with. These, I'm pretty darn sure, are concrete cinder blocks because they are extremely heavy, which is good. I don't think that a child that is gonna be standing on top of this bench or walking on it in any way, shape, or form is going to be able to flip these, because you would have to flip all three. The way I'm having the boards all hooked together, it's making it like there's one bench and you would have to have the strength to flip all three cinder blocks to make it tump over. And I just don't think that's gonna happen. But I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna put the top boards on and then I'm gonna hook it together and I'll show you how it looks at the end. I put this um, cardboard under it because it did have some little grass stubble over here. So I wanna kinda kill the grass. I'll put the wood chips all around that. You won't be able to see it but it'll have that uh, cardboard under it to kind of kill out any grass. So um, anyway, it's coming along. All I've gotten done so far is that. And I got this drug over and it still looks like a big barren backyard, but I'm hoping that 
if not today, for sure by Sunday evening I can have it all pulled together. All right, here it is finished. And it's solid as a rock. It's, it's sturdy like I wanted it to be. But it's a little too boardy looking because of the four by fours that are under there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my saw back out and I'm gonna cut some one by fours and put along underneath there in front of the four by fours and kind of make a little fascia that'll kind of hide that. And I think after that, I'm just done. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, much better. I put a little fascia board all the way around. It covers the end there. It goes all the way around there. And of course, on the other end. Those are the little boards there that I was telling you hook the bottom to the top. Got it screwed on there and they hook the bottom to the top. And so that's what makes it kind of like one heavy board piece. And if you do step on the top of it and stuff and try to tilt it, the tension of that bottom hits the cinder blocks and kind of stops it from wanting to rock and then of course the cinder blocks weigh so much i think it came out good <laughs> y'all this didn't cost me a penny except it, you know i bought the boards a long time ago for my ramp but these are just extras so i'm just looking at it as free these cinder blocks were already on our property so that's really free but i'm making a decision to just kind of cut this video off and show you what i've done so far if I keep going to try to finish this before showing a, a, a final product, <laughs> first of all, the video is gonna be way too long because I do wanna show all the little steps. But second of all, um, I just, I don't wanna go days and days and days before I edit this and put it up. It's just kinda, I gotta purge it out of me and go ahead and edit what I have because otherwise it becomes this extravaganza editing process that's so long. So I'm gonna cut it off. I think you've got the gist though. And I will show you the progress that I make as I keep going, but I just wanted to kind of let you know where I'm at right now. This is the view from a window. I moved the fire pit over to the right today. I got my bench built. That bench is five feet long, it's 60 inches. My direct TV thing will have to be dug up. I will go ahead and try here shortly to do it. But to be honest, our dirt is kind of like cement. I might just have to wait until we get a rain or two to kind of soften that up. I'm just gonna see, I'm gonna see how it goes. I have no idea how deep it is. And what I'm thinking is there could even be concrete down in there. It's gonna be kind of heavy for me to get out. So um, it might be an extravaganza. So I may wait just a little bit to try that. It's not in the way of anything. I am gonna go outside tonight and try to get one more thing done before I quit. And that is I'm gonna loop, I'm gonna loop my little come along thing around the Sega Palms and I'm gonna drive them to this area over here. I'm gonna kind of put them in an arc right there. Well, well, more like right there, something like that. I know I point a lot, but I like to just kind of tell you where I'm putting things. Uh, I'm gonna kind of use them as a bottom boundary to keep the wood chips from washing away. This is on a slight slope in my backyard. It, it slopes down towards that fence and that tree line. Where I put the bench is flat and where I put the fire pit pot is flat. But past it and before it, there's a slope and so the wood chips will just wash down the hill if I don't put those Sega palms as kind of like a barrier, a little berm. And I may end up using the um, lava rocks up here just to kind of keep water from washing through there. Um, I might just have to use those and I'll just figure something out for the front, but I'm not in any hurry, I can do that later. So anyway, I'm gonna stop today. I'll keep showing you later. I'll just post this up and you can see where I'm at. It feels like not a lot got done, but it did really. That bench took me a few hours to do. I had to go dig up those cinder blocks, clean them out, 
bring them over here with the golf cart. I had to cut all those boards and then sand them. The sanding them took about an hour and 45 minutes. And then when I got over here and realized I needed a little fascia around the bottom, I had to go back and start over and cut and sand again. Things just take longer than you think. It's about six o'clock in the evening. So if I can get the Sega Palms pulled over, I'm gonna consider it a win and call it a day. This is Laney at Hilltop Home Place. I hope you're kind of starting to see the vision with me. Thank you all who commented. And this is kind of fun. This is fun and it's taking my mind off of a lot of things and it's just bringing me a lot of peace. Y'all take care and stay free. Bye-bye.